presents Calling All Cars with Noah Beery as Dr. Heinrich Mueller. Calling all cars, attention all cars. Calling all Contra Costa County Sheriff's cars. Broadcast 49, a murder in Walnut Canyon. Stand by for description of suspect. California City, two police officers in a patrol car are puzzled by the erratic actions of a big sedan traveling ahead of them. That big car up ahead is acting mighty suspicious. Slowing down at a couple of gas stations like he was going in. Yeah, that is funny. He always turns back on the road real quick and then speeds away. You suppose it could be that gang who's been holding up gas stations? Well, it sure looks queer to me. Hey, there he goes. Into a station. Come on. If the mug tries to stick up, we'll catch him red-handed. Get your gun out. And fill her up with crack, and you'd better let me have a couple of quarts of Sinclair, Pennsylvania motor oil. Hey, hey, don't shoot. Uh, what's the matter? What have I done? Well, now that I see who it is, uh, I guess it's a false alarm. But I sure thought I was going to stop a gas station robbery. You've been driving in and out of every station for the past mile. And I figured you were looking for one to stick up. <laughs> well, that is funny. As a matter of fact, I've been looking for a station and sold Rio Grande cracked gasoline. I won't use anything else in my car. Hey, hey there, uh, wait a minute. What kind of oil is that you're giving me? Why, Pennsylvania oil, sir. Well, I want Sinclair Pennsylvania oil in cans. I don't like to buy oil in bulk. I'd like to know what I'm getting. Open a can of uh, Sinclair Pennsylvania, will you? Yes, sir. By the way, uh, what do you officers know about this murder in Walnut Creek? Oh, you mean that scientist guy I talked about? Tonight, Calling All Cars is honored to have as its guest the oldest sheriff in point of service in the United States. Sheriff R. R. Veal of Contra Costa County, California has worn his badge of office for 40 consecutive years. It is with great pleasure that we introduce Sheriff Field from San Francisco. In a few seconds, you will hear the Dean of American Peace Officers, Sheriff Field. Educate 
citizens and taxpayers to an understanding of your peace officer's problem. We whose lives are devoted to keeping the peace are very grateful. And now, on with the show. the deep shadows are pushed aside by a twinkling beam of light. In his isolated laboratory, Dr. Heinrich Wheeler is working late. The Mexican watchman, making his rounds with his little dog, peers through the window, sees the doctor's huge frame bent low over his retort, and hears the doctor humming an old German Religious tracks. On 
Jewel's Mountains or the Second Coming, they couldn't buy you a ticket to heaven. Eh, Buddha Thomas? <laughs> Perhaps you were a sinner. And what did the dog smell while your flesh roasted the inhale, eh, Buddha Thomas? <laughs> yeah. Well, no matter. You are dead. No one will ever miss you. <laughs> you did no good in the world anyway. While I, Dr. Heinrich Muller, I must go on to right over. Uh, but uh, our next work isn't over yet, Mr. Thomas. Now, you must, you must come along with me. That's it. Just a little way. Little far. Now, uh, just across the room, that way. Uh, there. Uh, now, this will be fine. <laughs> and now, you see, when they find the blackened cinder, you soon will be. They will see that I, the poor doctor, have been burned, bending over my chest tube while I was concluding my great experiment. You see, Bruder Thomas, I have told everyone what dangerous explosives I use in my work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. Now, uh, here are the 98 cents I have already shown to Pedro. These go in your right hand, trousers, pocket. And there, there now is my watch. <laughs> Pedro will recognize that, too. <laughs> mm, I hate to let you have that, Buddha Thomas. But, uh... <laughs> yeah, well, I... I think I can get another one somewhere with the two hundred thousand dollars worth of insurance which my wife will collect after my... Oh, pardon me, Mr. Thomas. I mean, your body is disgusting. There. You look convincing enough to me. Dressed in my clothes with my 98 cents on my watch in your pocket. Oh, you would almost pass for me as it is. Ah, but after you have been cremated, then... Then, my little friend, you will be perfect. You stand your turn. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Oh, I nearly forgot one thing. One little tasty thing. You have all your teeth, Brother Thomas. While I, unfortunately, am minus my left canine. Oh, now that would have been an error. But that's quickly rectified. Oh, this chisel on hammer will do the trick in just one second. Yeah. Yeah. Now that's perfect. <laughs> now, with your left canine molar missing, there can be no doubt that you are the unfortunate late Dr. Heinrich Muller. And I will carry this little tooth of yours with me always, Brother Thomas, as my last souvenir of you, of you, my good friend. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> well, the job is all done. Your identity is established as myself. My escape is provided for. And there remains but to pour this test tube into this beaker. Oh, a highly inflammable substance. On this, I will pour over your clothes. So, you are sure to burn. Or oh, now to pour the water off this phosphorus. That's bound to burn when the air hits, you know. Or oh, now to light the fuse. And it will soon be all over. Would not... On many thanks for the good way of what you have been.
Jack Bart, here's the Bournemouth man in a lift of the flaring flames of Dr. Heinrich Miller's laboratory. Pedro, the watchman, just retiring in his cabin a quarter mile away, is attracted by the explosion. He calls the fire department, and grabbing an extinguisher, rushes up the hill to fight the flames himself. With the assistance of the fire department, the blaze is put out before the laboratory is completely destroyed. When the charred body is discovered on the laboratory floor, that of R.R. Veal of Contra Costa County is notified. He arrives on the scene with his son, Under Sheriff W.M. Veal, just after the doctor's wife. When the soldier Senor is there, you are the theory? Yes, what's the trouble? Because there was a fire, and when the fire she is out, we find it moody. Whose place is this? This is the laboratory of the doctor and Muller. And who is the dead man? He is the doctor and Muller. How do you know? Madre Dios, the word for him. I talked to him just a half hour ago. Bill. Yes, sir. Go on to the corner and take a look around. Oh, okay. Who's this woman? That is Senora Nuno. Oh, I see. I beg pardon, ma'am. I'm the sheriff. Is this your husband? Have you any idea how this happened? He was working on a new formula. The chemicals are explosive. Something must have gone wrong. Oh, I see. Oh, he was the best man in the world. A great scientist. And a perfect husband. Of course. Will, will you send for the undertaker, Sheriff? Oh, it's so horrible. I never heard I'm sorry, ma'am, but we must wait for the coroner to arrive. The coroner? Why? He's dead. He was killed in his own laboratory. He that he's dead violently, and in all such cases, the coroner must investigate the scene before the body is removed. Does that mean there must be an inquest? Yes. Oh, but sure, that's so unnecessary. I'm sorry, but it's the law. Very well. But won't you please get it over with just as soon as possible? Oh, I can't stand much more. Yes, ma'am, we certainly will. No, I'd suggest that you go home and try to get some rest. Rest? Rest? What do you think I can get any rest tonight? Well, still, it would be more sensible than standing around here in the chill air. Please do, ma'am. There's nothing more you can do here. Very well. I'll go. That's right. We'll let you know when the inquest is to be. All right, sure. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Sheriff Beale, officers investigate Dr. Mueller's movements for the past week, while the under-sheriff places paid 
Pedro and the lie detectors Berkeley Police Headquarters. One hour later, the young man reports to his dad. Well, Dad, I've had Pedro on the lie machine, and I, I believe he's telling the truth. Which proves what? Well, it proves him innocent. He's convinced that he talked to Dr. Mueller last night. Dr. Mueller showed him his watch, and Pedro described the watch, and the worn-out fog. Dr. Mueller showed him 98 cents and said that was all the money he had in the world. And we found the watch and the 98 cents on the victim. Right. Now, I'm convinced that Pedro had nothing to do with it. I'm ready to eliminate him and start searching for this brother Harwood. Oh, good morning, Dr. Lee. Uh, good morning, Sheriff. Well, I've completed my autopsy. Good. What did you find? The victim met his death by hemorrhage of the brain, caused by three heavy blows on the skull by some blunt instrument. How long ago were these blows struck? And the man has been dead two days. Yeah, but Pedro the Watchman claims he'd seen Dr. Mueller last night at 9 o'clock. Bill, I don't think the victim is Dr. Mueller. What? There's very great room for doubt. According to the statement of Mr. and Mrs. Carter, with whom the doctor had dinner last night, he ate spinach, beans, coffee, and pie. Yes, that's right. And I examined the contents of his stomach, and I found no traces of any of these foods. But Mrs. Mueller positively identified the body this morning. She pointed out that her husband had his left canine tooth missing. Well, now, wait a minute. The left canine tooth of the victim was knocked out after death. Well, I'll be a short time, turn, G. And furthermore, I've examined some of the unburned portions of the victim's clothing. They were soaked in inflammable chemicals. Mm, murders and then made into a torch. Yeah. Right. Now we've got to start all over again. Look here, Dr. Leach. I don't doubt your word, but we've got to prove beyond the shadow of a doubt that the victim is not Dr. Mueller. Is there any portion of the victim's body that isn't burned beyond recognition? Well, yes, the right side of his face lay on the floor. Uh, any hair on it? Yes, I'm on the temple. Fine. What are you going to do, Bill? I'm going to get some of the combings out of Dr. Mueller's hairbrush and ask Schneider over at the university to compare them. That'll give us another check. Under Sheriff Beale manages to procure some of Mueller's hair from his military brushes and also to obtain a picture of the man. Albert Schneider, criminologist at the University of California, examines the hair and finds the combings are different from the victim's hair. <laughs> The unburned ear of the victim is compared with Mueller's ear on the photograph and found to be dissimilar. <laughs> Through the aid of the San Francisco examiner, a dentist is found who had done work on Dr. Mueller's teeth. He examines the corpse and finds that the body is not that of Mueller. <laughs> Police now send a search for Harwood. An undertaker in Placerville is located who identifies the murder victim as Harwood himself. Friendless, itinerant laborer, and religious fanatic. $1,000 reward. Arrest and hold one Dr. Heinrich Mueller, wanted for murder. 36 years old, height 6 feet 1 inch, weight 200 pounds. Mueller is wanted for the murder of Thomas Harwood in his laboratory at Walnut Creek, Contra Costa County, California, on Thursday, July 30th, 1925, at 9 p.m. Mueller was heavily insured for the benefit of his wife. $1,000 reward would be paid for the arrest and delivery of Heinrich Mueller to me at any place in the world. Arrest, hold, and wire at my expense. I hold warrant for murder. While descriptions of Miller are sent to every police station in the world, while police are watching all railroad and bus terminals, steamships, docks, airports, and highways, while customs officers are scanning each person who crosses the Canadian and Mexican borders, Newspapers all over the country are prominently featuring Miller's picture and description and asking their readers to look for him. But ten days pass and no trace is discovered of the fugitives. Public interest runs high and the manhunt is the subject of conversation everywhere. So it's no wonder that as Mr. and Mrs. Stanford, owners of an apartment house in Oakland, are winding up an evening of bridge with the couple next door that the conversation turns to the crime. Well, I think it's just terrible that the police haven't done anything about it. Done anything about it? Why, darling, you don't realize what a swell job they've done already. I was talking to my friend Ralph Pigeon. Uh, you know him, Eddie. He's a patrolman on the Berkeley Fort. Sure, I know Ralph. Why, uh, Ralph tells me that if it hadn't been for Sheriff Veal insisting on an autopsy, we would have buried that poor Harwood thinking he was Mueller. Yeah, Mrs. Mueller was anxious to get the thing over with. Sure looked like an accident. Well, how did they know Dr. Mueller did it? Looks like he did it all right. He skipped town. They found he'd drawn $900 out of the bank the morning of the murder. Yeah, and he had himself insured for 200 grand. And him an intelligent man, too, with an education and all. Just don't seem possible with a fellow like that to do such a thing. 
Have you seen a picture of them, Stella? Oh, land sakes, no. I've been so busy getting these apartments redecorated, I ain't seen the paper for two weeks. All I know is what Joe tells me. No, uh, if you ever get a look at the guy's picture, you think you could do it? Yeah? I'd like to get a look at his picture. Well, it must be around here someplace. Uh, what is that last thing he's open for you? Oh, it's right there by the Davenport. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah there you are, Stella. Uh, look at that picture. Certainly does look cruel. Mm-hmm. Why, Joe! Huh? Oh, what? Why, he's a dead image for Captain Spangler. What? Yes, look. Now put your hand over the lower half of the picture. See? The eyes are the same. Who's Captain Spangler? Oh, you know, that mining engineer from Mexico. He's always taken an apartment with us here every time he's been north in the last two years. Oh, yeah? Is he back? Yeah. Yeah, he came in town a week ago Thursday. Thursday. Oh, wait a minute. Mueller committed this murder Thursday night. And Captain Spangler's been acting mighty queer. Never acted like it before. I tried to talk to him yesterday about the murder. He walked right by me. He's rude about it. Said he didn't know nothing about murders and didn't want to. And a couple of days ago, when I went up to clean the apartment, he yelled at me to go away and leave him alone. Well, sure looks like this picture. Hey, you better call the police. Oh, but what if Captain Spangler isn't Dr. Mueller, but is really Captain Spangler? Why, they might do it. Yeah, and if Captain Spangler is Dr. Mueller, you can go to the pen for harboring a fugitive. I'm going to call up Ralph Pigeon right away. Within a half an hour, a posse of police under the command of Captain C.D. Lee arrives at the apartment house. Captain Lee deploys his men around the building covering every exit. Then he approaches the door of apartment number seven where Captain Spangler is. Thank you, Mr. Beery. Ladies and gentlemen, a moment ago. 
ago I quoted, crime does not pay. A particular crime that does not pay is the practice in some service stations of substituting a cheap bulk motor oil when you call for a well-known brand. Inspectors continually catch and find these offenders, yet thousands of motorists are robbed daily by this trickery. Your protection is to look for a Sinclair dealer because he sells Sinclair motor oils in tamper-proof cans and only in cans. And you can get Sinclair oils wherever Rio Grande cracked gasoline is sold. Calling All Cars is written and produced by William N. Lopeson. This is your narrator, Frederick Lindsley, bidding you good night for the Rio Grande Oil Company. of the Rio Grande Oil Company. Welcome to the police calling all cars, attention all cars.